Okay, so video for the KZPR1, it is a 13.2 millimeter planar driver. Um, the planar wars, this is number 10 maybe, I'm not even sure, I'll put it on the thumbnail. There's a lot of planars out there. Before we continue, let's get a few things out there. The 7 Hertz Timeless, the S12 by Let Shore, and the Wu Tang, I call it. I've opened all of them up with the assistance of that little doodad on top right there. It's a great little tool. And my tool kit and a, a heat gun, and I've looked at all of them, all the layers, the traces. They're essentially the same driver in those three popular sets. Now, in dynamic drivers and in others, they do the same thing. The Olina is based on the O2, and the O2 has that same driver in some other very well-regarded sets that people like, and it's popular with them because they can hear the quality of the driver. So the same driver being used in multiple sets is, is by no means a surprise. And so Planar is doing that suddenly when 7 Hertz came along. Should be no surprise to you. Open it up, take a look. Uh, it is what it is. They are tuned differently. I'm a big fan of the Wu-Tang because I think it's the best tuned version of that driver that I've heard to this date. Some people said it's not as high quality as the other replays. It's the same driver. I've opened it up. I can show it to you. Same thing. Um, it's how these things are tuned, I think, that makes the difference for certain people because it appeals to them. Now, the planar that is in the KZ is different from the timeless the S12 and the Wu. They made it themselves. And so far, the KZ and Dunu are the only companies I've seen do that because I did open up the Talos, I believe it's called. Um, and it's not the same driver that is in the other three that I mentioned. Now, let's take a look at the frequency graph over here first, and then we'll look at it more. It's got sub bass, mid bass to mids to the gain that goes... the. To the gain region, it's perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. It's Planars are great for speed. They don't suffer like dynamic drivers, so you can elevate it like that and really not have the mid-bass penalty of elevated bass. The gain from 1K up to its peak at 2.5 is a little bit more than I would want, ideally, but there's some sets that are like that that I'm totally fine with. I've got no problem with that. Now, I'm going to rotate over to the right so we can talk about this a little bit. This is the... Let me make sure I get the right one. This is the set we're talking about right now. This is the PR1. And as you can see, after you get to the gain, it does something that is kind of atypical. It just keeps rising, which is not any of the targets I'm familiar with. Myself, uh, Critical, who uses a version of the Harman modified, um, Super Reviews, um, Precog, anybody. I don't know anybody who's got a graph target that increases as you get into the only harmonics range. I don't know anybody that does that because that is an odd sounding replay. Most stuff is not tuned like this because it sounds unique. So this is non-ideal, but don't leave yet. This is a set that was released by CCA called the PLA, and it had an enormous amount of bass, and it had a very similar upper mids region, and then it had less energetic but still energetic treble. If you take this set and you were to combine it, it would look something like this, which I'll be straight up, this doesn't look bad at all. This is one of the better mid to upper mid profiles of any of the planars that are on the market right now. It's got energy but not too much. It peaks at the top of the ear gain and starts to come down. It doesn't have any peaks after the ear gain that are higher than it. It's got a notch in the area that I'd be okay with, and it's not too much. It's a, on a profile, if KZ released this, I would be very interested in grabbing it because it looks like something I would be probably okay with. Now, I'm going to give them my advice here. If you took this, which you can do because if you if if the driver is giving you energy, you can take it away. You can't make more energy than a driver can do. Like the melee, if you take all the dampening off a of melee, it still doesn't extend further than it does as it is right now because it, the driver doesn't work that way. So if this driver can do this, then it's possible to slightly suppress the upper harmonics and still maintain the rest of this. It's their job, if they wanted to do it, to try to figure out that and that would look like 
this. All I did was break it and then right here at 4K and I just, I'm sorry, no, actually it's at about 6.5 and I just tilted what is already the existing profile. It wouldn't be exactly like this, but if you look at this graph just like this, I think that the driver that they're using inside this one right here, and again, the rep is going to watch this video. I'm not jumping on your stuff at all. I'm actually saying that it's a good driver. It's an original driver. And I think you can optimize it before you move on to other things. You've already got, I think, another CCA coming out. Why not take this driver and do something similar to what I'm talking about? Because the PR1's bass sounds nice and clean. It's a little bit less than the PLA and more within the bounds of this driver performing effectively and efficiently. The mid to upper mids I don't think has really ever been the problem with the set. It's been a little bit too energetic in the treble region. So if you were to tamp that down, which would basically be taking the PR1 and using different dampening um, on a simple level, or you could do it in other ways. You obviously have engineers that can make your own drivers, etc. So you could do something like this. Well within the specs of the driver that is in front of me, and a tuning that is competitive with the best out there, including the Woo, right in front of you. And all I did was take the PLA and the PR1 and overlay them, choose the bass from the PR1. This area is identical on both sets, and then pull down the upper mid treble region. And then you've got a set that would work. So I'm going to say that before I get into the actual review. So let me close that down. Listening to music on a set like this, listening to Black Sabbath, Sultans of Swing, um, Radiohead, I think that this actually, the bass on this set sounds fine. That's why I am doing the video in the way that I'm doing it. Low end does sound clean, accurate. Accurate means fast, um, realistic. There's really no problem there. Whenever you're listening to something, whether it's something like um, pack like sardines which has a lot of upper energy as well you can hear the preview of what's coming when you start to evaluate the treble or focus on it because it's ever present because of the boosted harmonics so there is not a problem really with the bass when we get into the mids and we start to listen to stuff like Fleetwood Mac and vocals the vocals are suffering from taking that region that is already a little bit boosted because of the way that the gain, ear gain is but that's really not that's totally to taste. But when you get to something like Fleetwood Mac, with two male, two female singers, the upper harmonics of the vocals of all of the singers on this album are overemphasized, and cymbal strikes are very prominent, and guitars are very prominent. And I'm really focusing on the mids at this point in vocals, but I'm very much aware because part of the vocals are up in the region that is boosted, what's coming when I get to the treble. So the bass is fine, the mids are not bad, the upper mids though are giving a preview of what's to come in the treble, and when you listen to stuff like Vivaldi, which I listened to a lot recently, you are quickly overwhelmed by the upper harmonics, and I'm talking again to the KZ representative. If you were to listen to this to be specific, concerto number no. one in E major with the set that you have right here, it would maybe be somewhat fatiguing for you over a period of time, especially if you were to continue through the next concerto to, to the number two, the number three. For me personally, it's immediate, but maybe it takes you longer. I think the problem a lot of people have with this is the way that it treats the harmonics of stuff like violins, m vocals. The cymbal strikes in Led Zeppelin obviously sound uh, quite pronounced and overemphasized. Pimp C as well. So this is a set that contains what sounds like a good driver, not being optimized, but it has a couple versions, I think, if the CCA is the same, that are kind of showing that this set can do better. All The timeless, the woo, the... The S12 are not identical, but they're essentially the same driver. So it's about tuning now. It's not about the quality of the driver and you can hear how it's not great. It's about tuning and improving the tuning. So this this is a Planar Wars video, but it's uh, uh, it's critical consumer feedback. 
uh, take consumer out of this. This was sent to me. This is just critical feedback. I'm not throwing it under the bus. I'm not telling everybody to skip it. I'm saying that there's a high probability that this company, either CCA or KZ, is going to do something like what I'm talking about right now. And I would wait for that to come. And if you were to get this set, you probably most definitely are going to need to use some EQ. So be aware of that. If you're not okay with EQ, this is a set that you'd probably skip. I would recommend that you do so. But I've I've given advice before and it's been taken by lots of companies. I'm not talking about KZ like I'm their dad or something. A lot of companies, they, they watch these videos. They want to get feedback. Some of the confusion is sometimes that uh, influencers, not influencers, but YouTubers, or, or bloggers feel pressure to give positive reviews because they'll be cut off if they don't do so. A lot of sellers and companies want to hear specifically what is the problem instead of someone just saying, that's no good, that's crap, don't buy this, this is junk. That doesn't help anybody. Be specific. Vivaldi Strings Concerto Number no. 1 is intense in the tuning of this PR1 in its stock form. If you listen to classical music, I don't think this would work at all. That's me being specific. Cymbal strikes as well sound overly emphasized. Vocals the same, male or female. The upper harmonic sound unnatural. And I know why. It's because of that harmonic boost. That's my specific critical feedback for this set. It's obviously within the specs of this set and the ability to tune it better. And I gave an example of what I would think would be a good execution of this driver. And that's it. That is Planner Wars number, I think, 10. And I hope that the next or the one after Planar looks something kind of like what I just said because, the, like I said, the upper mid region is one of the better tuned of all the Planars. It could be like a woo for cheaper money. This is a business. This is about making money and profit. And I'm out.